All right, so we'll call the uh, Selectman's Board meeting uh, March 6, 2014 to order. Uh, Ten minutes late to four, uh, sorry, 440. First on the docket is to amend and approve the minutes from February 20th. Can I have a motion to do so? So moved. Second. Any discussion on those minutes? I have none. None. Okay. And, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, warrant article hearing on February 11th. Um, public hearing held to discuss the warrant articles and some adjustments. Can I have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Second. Any discussion on those? No. Right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And lastly, the second warrant um, article meeting on, wait a sec, that's not right. Yeah, I'm sorry, February 20th, right. Okay. Um, and I'll take a motion for those minutes. So moved. Second. And again, these were to correct some other articles, right. issues we had in the past. So, uh, any, all those in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. All right. Update on action items. <coughs> Bob Hancock on that one. Was to meet with the police and discuss the health insurance, and we're going to move that to public comments on uh, number three. So, we'll move uh, that one. Either public comments down at the bottom of seven. Yeah, I had an arrow here that moved oh, up to okay. three. So All right. That way we can get uh, Carl out of here. Okay. Um, I did contact uh, a source for uh, Peter Hall's estate, and that person is willing to take that on. Uh, so, I'm very glad to hear about that and keep us out of that one. Great. Thank you. No problem. <clears throat> Mine's going to need to roll over again. Okay, Bob's going to roll his communications protocol proposal. Uh, Julie A had to check on the insurance, and we're good to go on that, right? Great. Painting. Yeah. And the building inspector certification. What was that about? Um, I think you want to see um, what Andy's certifications were. Oh, that's right. Higher. Yep. So she did put in the. Uh, I did see that. And you had to uh, give George's comments uh, to the interview committee. We did that. And schedule Ranger to come talk to us about the uh, the repairs. And second call out to them. No, that. Nothing yet. On that one. All right. Um, obviously, today, uh, just some notes here. The 11th is the town meeting, the voting portion. The 13th at 7 p.m. is the town meeting, which is the business portion. And another selectman meeting on March 20th at 4.30. Uh, move on to public comments. <laughs> I know, I'm waiting for Ann. <laughs> I, I was called by Kyle McMover and, and, and given the information I could on the uh, health uh, insurance mm -hmm. uh, for the current people that are still on the old system. Yep. And uh, if you want to entertain them now. Sure, uh, I'd love to. I think back around 1989, I think the board then they consisted of uh, Peter Kelly. Um, Dean McLean, no, Frank, no, no. Frank DeFruscia, no, no, and Ross Hill agreed because they were having problems giving pay increases to town employees. They uh, agreed that the town employees would uh, not have to pay anything towards their insurances. Now, over the years, that remained in effect, and if you look back in the records during the 90s, most of the town employees didn't give any raises. I don't know why. That was kind of standard. Around 2004 or early in 2005, the question came up again because a lot of people are going to be retiring. So what the board at the time, I think it was myself, Dean McClave, and Dick Bennett, I believe that was the time um, period was, we agreed that because we had a number of long-term employees that were due to retire soon, uh, one passed away, but the rest retired over the next few years, and any future employees that were hired would have to pay that stipend towards their insurance. So we agreed with the old system that the current employees at the time would remain. The current employees that are still here, I think, are uh, Kyle and um, Sean Callahan. 
So I think those are the only two people that are still on the whole non-contributory system. And again, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a decision made by selectmen, so you guys can, you, know, you can change that, but I think the meaning, the intent to give your word to somebody should last over time, I think. But that's my opinion. You can do whatever you feel, you know, whatever your pleasure. I appreciate that. No, I appreciate your input on that. Really good. Yeah, you can talk to Frank DeBruce. I will talk to Frank. I'm, I'm, I didn't I'm know. Ross, and who was the third one, Ross? And Peter Kelly. Peter, Peter Kelly, of course. I will ask Frank about that. Because that's... Uh, yeah. I, that he was went before Tuesday. He's going for it. <laughs> Anybody else with public comments? Was it agreed that we would just carry them, or were they grandfathered? There's a difference. If, I think we intended as a grandfathering process. That's, that's, that's different. That they would be, you know, not, it would be changed in the future. But again, that's something yeah. that a board of selectmen made, and it wasn't, I don't think it was like cast in stone. Mm -hmm. But it was sort of, it was a grandfathering, because we had several other people that were like, I think, seven or eight on them at the time. Five of the four of the road crew, one died, one of the four retired, and another person left. John Moulton. And John Moulton left. He moved to Florida, Utah. So. I think John Kelly was on it, and he was here, but then he left, and you know, that Kyle came in and Sean. So. But it was a grandfathering process. And the minutes we got said, what, status quo or something? Keep status quo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It didn't say. Grandfather specifically. Yeah, right. yeah. Very good. Thank you. Anybody else with public comments? All right. We'll move on to police report then. <coughs> How are you? Good. 32 degrees is warm up. Yeah, I know. It feels great, doesn't it? <laughs> nice sunny. I know. Yeah, it's awesome. As far as uh, incidents that we've had to deal with the past couple of weeks, Motor vehicle accidents, there were two. Uh, assist the fire department was, a, was two. Parking issues, uh, a couple of those. Wires down call, we had one of those. Five burglary alarms, again, ended up being uh, accidental or false alarms. One assist to a motorist, uh, assist Bartlett Police Department with a burglary alarm in their town. One wild animal complaint. A si someone gonna say something? Oh. Uh, assist Conway Police Department, one. Uh, domestic disturbance, one call. Domestic animal complaint, one call. A missing persons report, we had one, and that person was found okay, so we're all right. Uh, assist Bartlett Police Department with a motor vehicle accident, and one suspicious circumstance, and that's the big ticket items, big items we had. So vacation week went well? Yes. Yeah. yeah. No hassles or anything. Got uh, a couple of days without some snow, so that was nice. Yeah, right. people have been driving pretty well when there is snow lately, too, mm -hmm. so that's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Anybody have anything for sure? Any parking issues over the February vacation week? I know we had some around Christmas, but that was obviously because of the storm and the plowing need and everything, but anything come? I don't recall, I don't think so. Good. Not too many, maybe one. Good. Or, yeah. Excellent. Very good. good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, I want to raise the back here. Sure, go ahead. It's a little more in health care. Um, I truly heard back from Peter Malley today. Mm -hmm. And Peter Malley basically said, uh, with what you're reviewing, you can go either way. It's, it's the decision's up to the select them. Um, and then this is uh, something that a previous board said we could have, and we've had it for the last nine years, um, no problem. So I, I just kind of wanted to, I don't know if you have the latest of what Peter Malia had said, that that's what it is. I got copied for it, but yeah. Yeah, I, I did see that. Thank you. Well, are, are we going to have a more in-depth discussion on that right now, or what, what, what's, the, what's your pleasure? I was assuming we were going to discuss it further. It came up about the LGC saying you, you know, maybe can't do that. So um, 
I had the health care planner. I met with Carl. I didn't meet with Sean. He wasn't here, but met with Carl, and I have a proposal, but it may be, you know, it's a proposal. It doesn't mean that's what we do, but right. I would like to have five minutes to talk about it because I told yeah. Carl what I was going to do. Well, why don't you guys come up and have a seat and join us with the, in the conversation? Martha, what was your... I was just thinking that during the, the transition with the, the contract with Bartlett, Jackson, Transfer Station, mm -hmm. and John Edgerly, I think there was discussion at that time because John was on the same... Right, that's correct. Right. And there was discussion about the fact, and I think you may find what you were looking for. I mean, this there was quite a bit of discussion around that. Back when he transitioned to when being a part of employee. Right, and, and what you had to do to keep him equivalent because he had been promised that. And I'll, I'll see what I can find. Yeah, thank you. That's somewhere there. Yep, <clears throat> that was about last year. Almost a year ago. Um, and I, Carl and I spent, I don't know, a half hour, 45 minutes talking about this. and. Uh, um, my background obviously is somewhat attuned to this discrimination process. Um, also, I have not <clears throat> seen anything that clearly solves this problem, okay? And I think that's how we got the LGC question came up as um, anyone, ha you know, I can sue you for being in Los Angeles yesterday, <laughs> whether you were there or not. So clearly, the, there is some exposure regarding, um, you know, this thing without any absolute clarity around it. You have witnesses, but, you know, I, I, all I'm saying is it's not absolutely clear that this was an ironclad process. So um, my proposal is this, that it's in the budget now to pay this medical insurance this year and just go ahead and pay it and don't impact it whatsoever. Next year is to change the, I think it's 15%, right? Change it, take 50% of that. The next year, take 50% of it to bring them in line with everyone else. That's my proposal, which there was some discussion of this with us one or two or three meetings ago. I think we're going to do 5, 5, and 5, I think it was going to be our... We had several discussions. Yeah. 5, 5, and 5 is fine. Okay, I don't, I'm, I'm looking at a way to get it back together, I guess, is my position. Right. But if there's other information, and this is, we talked about it, I mean, if there's ironclad information, I'm not trying to change the, the process. I think there should be an equalization. Without some ironclad business, I think you need to equalize this thing. I know that it's come up to me under the table about this problem, so it's not a non-event about you guys getting paid medical and other people not getting it. So it's not, it's not like, an, it, there is some, I don't say how much, there is some seething that's been brought to me. So everybody isn't happy, which, you know, I guess that's not even unusual. No surprise there. Yeah. But my position is we try to pull it back together, and I also said to Carl, everybody has the option of making a case, however you want to do it. But the people, person that is not happy, when he got hired here, he understood, he was told what he was being hired on what the package was. He agreed when he accepted the job here. Yes, I will take that. I like that. I want it. I'll get, you know, now, um, the person, has, I'd say, became jealous, and I want it. If I can't have it, you can't have it, type of mentality. So um, whatever this person agreed to when he got hired, they, you know, when I got hired, I. You know, I, it was what it is. When Sean got hired, it was what it is. And same with this person. But now this, this person doesn't want to live with what he agreed to get hired when he got hired. I, I said I've been in the same situation. I mean, as, as when I started teaching back in 1980, I had 100% health care. Now I'm <laughs> down to 80, and I have to pay $500 deductible. You know, I certainly didn't have a choice in that matter, um, unfortunately. Um, you know, because now almost a third of my retirement check goes to pay my health care benefits that I have to pay now. So it's, it's not a pleasant situation. I, I, you know, I certainly see the side of it, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's tough to have, you know, people at different levels within the town. I think that really makes for a lot of animosity. 
among some of the people who are also working under you know, different <coughs> rules. Um, you know, I don't know what the fair thing to do is. I'm certainly open for suggestions, but. Well, again, I get, I get back to when they got hired here, when he got hired here, mm -hmm. he, this was what was offered to him, and he said he agreed. This is fine with me. I'll take it. I want it. Gino? An idea might be, if you're going to postpone the year anyway, put it in the warrant on it for next year and spell it out, 555, whatever you want to do. And then let the town decide, and that takes the burden off your back. It makes it a 400 vote decision one way or the other. And you don't have to feel like, you know, you're going back in the past to dig up some little problems. Mm -hmm. But it might be a way to do it. I think that we, when we got involved in this whole um, salary research exercise to try and upgrade, bring bring you know the whole department up to a level where your peers and other towns were, was to because we felt that was the fair thing to do, mm. and um, and so certainly that has been done with an 8% proposal this year and, and really a, certainly a, a commitment from the current board to like look at this as a three-year project each year and that would get us up to that place. Wh what we've heard from though, I want to make it clear here for the record that we're not hearing from a an individual, we're hearing from multiple people in multiple departments about about this issue, and that doesn't have to guide us, and that doesn't have to drive us. But it's like a any issue. There's always two good sides to a story, and I think that we need to acknowledge that there there are some valid arguments on both sides of this thing, and try and come in and weigh in, and maybe be arbiters if we have to, and do the right thing. And I think that. Just like when we went through that salary exercise, one of the questions I had when the insurance issue started to be kind of a discussion was, what are other departments doing? How many other departments are out there right now that are currently paying 100% of the benefits of their officers? And because when I got the salary sheet from the research being done, it was really helpful for me to try and find a way to be fair to our police department. And if I had the same document, if, again, you know, it's like facts need to drive the day for me, really. And if I had that, if I knew that you have your your peers and other departments in, 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 the, in the county are, are all getting 100% of their health benefits paid, then that's going to really kind of shape my view of this. If, if, if they're all paying 85% and my goal is to try and get this department up to a fair average, then that's going to, that's going to shape how I weigh in on this too. So um, I would love to know what some of the freedoms, and, uh, you know, all the departments that we had, that, that, that exercise that you did was comprehensive, it was clear, it, it, it really allowed us to take a look at where we were and it allowed us to set a goal and where we wanted to be with you guys in order to treat you fair. Um, I'm not, I'm, 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 I'd be more swayed by that than I would be swayed by, you know, what was done in 1989 because I had a different, you know, I mean, you people that have had the same job since 1989 have seen their change. health benefits change through the years and you do the best you can, but certainly insurance has gone up an incredible amount. And, and so <coughs> we want to be able to turn around and when, when others and other departments express concerns, we want to be able to say, you know, we looked at this thing, we, we did the best we could, and it's maybe not a decision that'll make everybody happy, but, you know, at the same time, I think uh, getting the facts so that the facts drive the decision is, right. is, is what I want to make sure happens with this. And, and uh, you know, um, I don't know, was I the only one that got one of these? Because I thought they were different sheets, and, and Julie put together. Or, I don't know, oh, I didn't Julie get this. Hoyer, no, she said she was going to do this. Yeah. Um, put this together that kind of showed 
where an 8% increase would be for both of you, well, yours would be 4%. And then, and then it would show a contribution. Now, you know, and again, in the spirit of letting facts drive the discussion, if we charged you half, a 7.5% of the medical deduction this year, and with your 4% increase, your net would go down by $7 uh, per week. And that, and that, and I don't think, and and that's not something that I support. I don't, I don't support making decisions. I mean, we've been toiling here for a long time, and we've had these conversations when I was the police liaison about you know, spinning your wheels. I mean, it's just it hasn't been happening through the years of two percent increases and, and 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 things like that. So. I, I don't I don't support getting into a situation where we've got this relatively large percentage of increase that translates into a zero dollar amount on the net. So this is one way of looking at it. Sean, if you had an eight percent increase this year you, you, and, and you were charged with 7.5 percent of your health benefits, your net weekly pay would only go up by seven dollars. And so that's kind of spinning our wheels, you know. So we, we talked about 5% a year, and then I, but I guess there's been a discussion about instituting this in the following year and doing half each year. I, I, you know, I'm open to solutions on this, but at the same time, I want to make sure that this is a fair and balanced approach. And so it's difficult because, you know, everybody's very supportive of, of the department in the sense that, I mean, it's kind of like everybody in here when we did the when we when we did the budget hearing was like, yeah, eight percent. I mean, we we were coming in thinking maybe six percent. The next thing I know, everybody's like, well, let's do eight percent. I think it's because of the job you do, the quality of the work you do. I mean, there's so to take this thing and and look for a contribution like that when the fact of the matter is everybody thinks that your work is outstanding, you're above and beyond the call of duty. And we get this eight percent increase, and it amounts to seven dollars a year. That that doesn't really feel like an increase. No. It doesn't it's feel like an increase. So if I you take out the really health work. payment, if that's so what we're saying. A week, a week, not a year. Week. A week. A week. I'm sorry, week. Said yeah. a year. Sorry, a week. week. I said a week the first time. I might have misspoke the second time. But a, a week, seven dollars a week. So, you know, where, where's the solution? You know, and I just want to make sure that we have explored all these options. So. Bill? Maybe that'd be I don't know how morally or legally even you can give something to someone and then take it away from them. It's not, it doesn't, doesn't make any sense to me. And these people that are objecting to the fact that they have 100% coverage are small thinkers. They're not thinking the process through. These guys came on board long before they did. And that's 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 part of rewarding them with the coverage. Aid. It was it was a commitment made by the, the, the selectmen, by the town of Jackson, and we need to live up to that. And to give it to them in one hand and take it away in the other, that's an insult. That's not right. We all know that's not right. Now, how do we make it right? If you want to do it, if you want to get them up to speed and have everybody on the same page, make them pay the 100%, the, the but give them a pay increase that's relative to what they're paying in. If it's $100 a week that's costing them, which I think it is, then give them a $100 a week raise and offset it and be done with it. I mean, these guys have been faithful employees of this town when others have gone by the wayside. And you need to look at that also. And that has to weigh in heavily in, the, in your decision making process, I say. B? Bill, most of the ones have retired. That is I know that. that. They have gone by the wayside, they retired. But the highways get the 4%, cars, and then they were anticipating giving the other 2 8%. 
I think 4% in the security is a hell of a good race. But maybe I'm wrong. If you ask me, you're wrong. Well, but I can tell you that Chief and Bartlett and Cheryl both get their health, pay, health care paid for. I, I'll tell you that because Brenda told me that. I asked her. The, the, the police department gets the their Bartlett health care? The PD, Cheryl and Chief Clark would get this paid. Madison, they, get a, they pay a percentage. And bringing them up to snuff if you're taking, not, I'm not talking personalities or anything, but you're comparing, it isn't really apples to apples in different police departments, because Congo is the biggest town in Carroll and Wolf Bowl's hands. I mean, you've got to do some research. Thank you. It's, it's pretty hard to you know, compare apples to oranges. That's what I'm you, know, saying. As, you know, you just have to go with a ballpark figure. And in yeah. a ballpark figure, they were definitely on the low end of the spectrum across the board of all the towns that were were uh, selected there. And there were a few. Yeah. Gina? Quickly, John. Kind of the problem in the process over the years was the fact that certain boys over time had no pay increases at all. Mm -hmm. What happens now is if you start in a couple of years, John, with the 15 percent, whatever it is, and future boards don't come in with pay increases every year, which happens. It happened just a couple of years ago. It was two years. Then they fall behind, and future boards have to come and catch up. The people that come on after Sean knew they were paid accordingly. Their pay increase. They had pay increase. Look back. They got the, the, the shop got a dollar an hour more every year for like five years because they were down on 12 bucks back in 2000. But they went up to 18. So the office staff got according raises. It's not kind of like making up, true. But <coughs> to give you a word, it's going to mean something. And I mean, I know, I think if the town voted, 400 people voted, I don't know how many votes it were, they think, oh, we want them to pay, then you got a deal. But I think three select are making that deal, even though you can. I would wait on it. I really would wait on it. I can wait anyway, you were down. So. Mm -hmm. I would talk to you two selectmen that were on the board at the time. I will definitely give Frank a call for sure. Where did we leave this at the last meeting? Did we <coughs> make a motion and, ha and vote? Bill, do you remember? I think we were waiting on Peter. <coughs> we were said there's so other we information we need from okay. Peter, so we didn't do it. Right, I think that was. Yeah. And the other thing was, um, Julie was going to look back through the minutes and the meetings and see if she could come up with something of... She did that. Yes. Uh, didn't yeah. have much success, but she did do that. Right. Hey, yes, George? After listening to the discussion, I agree that, you know, there was a commitment made. I don't know if it's in writing or if there was a contract and uh, there's two signed on. And I think it's incumbent necessary to honor that because once a commitment is made, when you back off of it, where does it stop? You have to stay with what was offered. But I think that's very important. I mean, you can certainly have the same discussion on the floor of the town meeting. I mean, this is the, you know, we'll see what the will of the people are, I guess, so to speak. But. Any other comments? Bill? No. We seem to be comparing, like, other the police people. department to the road department. That's not fair to either one of them. I mean, a road department, just because they get whatever they get, should have no bearing on what the police department these guys put their life on the line every morning when they get out of bed. The road department does not do that. And we have to take that into consideration. And we're fortunate we live in a great town we live in. And if God forbid something ever happened, it would be catastrophic. But these guys put their life on the line 24-7, 365 days a year. You must take that into consideration when you're in your decision making. I'm doing that. That's why I said talk to the selectman that made the commitment. All right, we'll do that.
anything else? Well, I'm really glad you guys both came in and we got Appreciate to have this kind of Thanks discussion. For time. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, moving on to building matters. Um, we got Sunny Couture update. Uh, we have a letter here from Goody. Um, it says, as promised, I've spent some time reviewing your permit application on town zoning ordinances and, more importantly, the state law, in particular RSA 674- or sorry, colon 41. It appears that I, as building inspector, am prohibited from issuing a building permit until an appeal is made to the ZBA, as noted by the previous building inspector, Andy Chalmers. Um, or you may appeal to the Board of Selectmen for a variance. The state law is very specific in regards to the building permit applications and land use regulations. I believe it would be beneficial for your state work uh, to state your work and time so far in this project to demonstrate to the Board that it would be both a hardship and a financial upset not to be allowed to proceed with your plans to construct your building. I'm very sorry that this issue has come up this late in the process. I, if I can be any other assistance, please let me know. So. Um, so Andy had initially had denied the building permit, uh, I believe the date is January 2nd, and um, obviously good, he's been thrown into this and, and he's recommended to go to ZBA, which I think is where it should go, personally. But, um, I think the only concern I have about that it's to not to say that Andy denied that um, I'm not sure that's completely accurate in my mind with the timeline as I understand it as I understand it Andy submitted his resignation at about noon and he sent out an email recommending that we deny it about 5.30 in the evening right. the same day. So I don't think Andy took action. Andy made a recommendation to us. So I, I don't know that it's accurate to say Andy denied it. Sorry. I don't know that it's accurate to say that it had been denied. And so I'm wondering if there's been a misinterpretation there. Um, that's probably, the, <coughs> excuse me, probably the case. Um, nevertheless, Goody has, has um, reviewed it and decided that he wasn't going to um, issue the building permit, which really the only other action is for right. them to go to the ZBA. Um, well, when and if the day comes, this ends up in front of the ZBA, I think that it, it's important that they have an accurate timeline and understanding of just what's happened today. I agree. Comments? What's the issue? Um, uh, let's see, the, it appears that it'd be landlocked parcel, and the only access is through an existing tote road utilized years ago for logging, and apparently that was classified as a uh, driveway at some point. So uh, there's some dubious distinction between the two there that obviously could be rectified, so but that was kind of where that one is. Any other comments on that from anyone? Uh, interview updates. Um, let's see, we went held uh, an interview for one of the building inspectors. Went very well. Um, unfortunately, there's a little miscommunication with the other uh, applicant, and we had to reschedule that for next Thursday. And obviously, we'll hold a meeting again to uh, have that uh, interview take place. Uh, which time the committee can decide what they, how they want to move forward from there. Um, I know Huntley said he couldn't make it, right? right. We can't make it. And you're you're going to replace me, right? Right. Um, yeah, Dick, ben, Dick would be there. That was could he? Um, you still are you be able to make it, Tom? Okay, good. Um, but I thought the interview went very well, and, and uh, it was a good good starting place. For what we hope to do. Uh, new business, changes to the operation of the transfer station. Again, I'm seeing this for the first time here, so. Oh, they're talking about the baler. They have to buy, they want to. Um, I did, um, 
talked with John Edgerly about this the other night. Um, and um, with Burr, uh, he was at the, at the interview committee as well. And um, Gene Chandler and I had, had talked about you know, redoing or reconfiguring the uh, paths, the pathways of which people travel, and also where uh, the baler is going to be, and, and storage containers, and you know, recycling bins, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, John has done some paperwork here on that, and we're uh, going to engage uh, Bird. Kind of gives him some direction. Hopefully, uh, make some kind of master plan is the, kind of the game plan for that um, when we have our uh, transfer station meeting, uh, second one of the year. So he already has spent time with Burr going. Through um, that I don't think or that's no. I don't think Burr. Step. I just okay. talked with Burr about it the other day. I don't think he's actually engaged. Uh, um, you know, I just want to make sure it's okay with you guys that yeah. you know, we do engage Burr and. and Get him get his opinion on this, but uh, I know John has put a lot of thought into it, and you know he's done some sketches here, and, and um, you know obviously you know Burr being an engineer and stuff, that would be nice to have him look at it and yeah. see what he thinks and and go from there. Um, but uh, that was kind of the where that was going on that. You guys have copied that. I'm sorry, I need to keep that from you. Um, so. So I think it'd be uh, really helpful to have um, Burr's opinion of these um, changes in the layout up there um, <clears throat> when we have a joint meeting. Yes. And I'm almost wondering if it might be in everybody's best interest to also have him at the meeting. I would think so. For discussion. Because I think it's silly to have them to not put a lot of weight into what the people up there working day to day uh, right. think could could work, but at the and at the same time, then to get the engineer's eyes on it, and to have him being able to have weighed in on this before that meeting would probably be uh, a way to move the discussion along. I agree. I do too. Um, there's really no um, timeline set for this. Right. Because um, we're not in any, you know, it's nothing disastrously wrong up there right now that we have to rectify. So, right. um, so we can move as cautiously or as we need to, I guess. Not run it down people's throats. Yeah. What, what if any changes we make up there may actually be one of our biggest, if not the biggest, project we undertake next year. So mm. I think that may be forward with as much of the professional input as possible. Probably be a good idea. Any other discussion on that? Item B, uh, road toll bill. It's an FYI from uh, New Hampshire road agents and public work directors, an increase of toll Approximately four cents per gallon, effective July first, two thousand fourteen. Why are they collecting this toll? Uh, just a gas. That isn't the gas tax. Oh, just the gas tax. Oh, is that what it is? Off the gas tax. There it is. Yep, yep. I see it. Yep. So that's what they're gonna. Just an increase in the gas tax. Yep. <clears throat> Yay. Tax refund request, item C, John Dunn. Uh, this is uh, for the interest. Apparently, um, he gave a check uh, for the full amount and for some reason was lost and um, never cashed. And obviously, Occurred some interest on that, and just let me know if we get a refund the three hundred and fifty-three dollars and twenty cents in the late penalty. Um, exact same thing happened to me, but it happens. When so he paid the check on time. Uh, well, yeah, he said amount, uh, the amount of taxes due at the time was uh, $4,796. He wrote his check 
4158 to the town early in June and mailed it. Somehow between my house and the Postal Service and the town, the check was lost and never cashed. The tax therefore shows up in your records as never being paid and it has no record of, uh, let's see, it didn't mention something about, yeah, I've asked TD Bank to trace the original check, um, but it was not cashed. So, so he had to write a second check. Write a second check and, and pay, or it had to include a $353.20 mm -hmm. fine on mm -hmm. top of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, um, what's your thoughts on that? When did it occur and how long did it take to take action? I mean, that's a lot of money, 300 and some odd dollars, interest and penalties on $4,000. I mean, yeah, I think it's 12%. To, it's, yeah. yeah, he had to know that his check didn't clear at a reasonable time when he made <coughs> a statement. He well, he said he, moved, he mailed, it, mailed it in June, right. and then he wrote the second check in February. So Right, that's, that's exactly so what I'm saying. He should, the man know. should have known the next month when he got his bank statement, the check didn't clear. Call mm -hmm. the town and see what happened. The town would say, we never got your check to it. Don't wait six months and then expect us. Well, I think, in, in fairness to anybody, I mean, how, how they uh, manage their checking account is their business. It's not ours. I, I think it, it seems to me like the timeline here is that he sent it in in a timely manner, didn't know about it until he got the second bill from the town six months later. Which would have been in December. And then mail a check in February. Yeah. So Bob, didn't really hop on it. It'd be nice to. Bob, you know and I know that if you didn't have a $4,000 check here, you would know the following month and you would have acted on it. Well, you and I might have, but that doesn't mean that well, you know, that's how he needs to be. Yeah, I, I'd like to know more on that before I. And do they get notified if they miss the uh, July? Wouldn't we set out a late notice, or is, I would, maybe just I don't know what the process late like. with interest accruing until January. Yeah, I would think if you didn't pay your taxes, somewhere would get notified, but you know. Phil, any thoughts on that? Phil. He's asking for an abatement or a refund. I can't spell. I think you have a responsibility to pay your taxes. And, you know, I mean, I, I just, it's one of those things. It's, you know, you, you properly mailed it, presumably, and that's okay. But you still have the responsibility to pay the taxes. My opinion is that it didn't get paid <coughs> until much later. And my opinion would be it's one of those things, I agree, but I, I would not refund the money. So your, your, your view is that you're responsible to pay the taxes, not just put them in the bank. You, you know, the I follow, think if we adopt follow. any other process, yeah. we're making all kinds of leeway into this thing. I mean, you know, I lost it in my car, I, you know. But anyway, that's my opinion. Yeah. So we need to uh, it happened to me, and I, I, I ate the interest on it. You know, it was the exact same situation. I thought I had mailed it and didn't show up my check register. I went down you know, two months later and said, oh, I never received it, and here's your interest bill. <laughs> and I had to eat it. That was two months, not six months. It was two months, right. That's the, that's the, that's so there's really no action required unless we want to give him his requested refund, or should we make a decision now not to do that? Or, or we can just table it, see if, see if we can find some more information, and maybe it's something that right. Karen knows that we don't know. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm not. I'm, that letter personally, yet? I'm not inclined to to uh, yeah. it. Just you know. The other thing. The is timeliness of it. It would be nice to get the timeline on that. Yeah, well, there's um, when, a timeline. When did, uh, well, I mean, y yeah, but. Uh, when did he get his second bill showing that interest had accrued? Is it, it seemed like that should be December. It doesn't yeah. say that on here, but that's my guess. And so yet, at the same time, the check didn't go out until the third week of February. So there's a disconnect there. Yeah. 
So I mean, if it came in December, I you know I would be a little more sympathetic. Right. Okay. The other thing you have to be careful if you do make an exception here. I mean, that's 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 precedent for the future. Can of worms. Future, which I mean, there's a total lack of responsibility there. Obviously, if that were you or me or anybody else, you'd have known it the next month when you got your bank statement. Any others? Yes. I right, want to ask Karen on that one. See, some info on that. Uh, February six scrap metal update. Sorry, did I miss one? Tax appeal. I'm sorry. Tax appeal. All right. So. Uh, so this is uh, Mr. Sear and his tax appeal again. Um, so we'll probably just forward that out to Jason again. Yeah, I saw that. Like today or yesterday? Yep. All right. Scrap metal update. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, so he pays us. Uh, this is for Roger Labby. Labby, who's taking the scrap metal. Thank you. And uh, I guess we have misstated that he we pay him. He pays us twelve hundred and fifty dollars to uh, take the scrap metal away. So. Sorry for mis any misunderstanding on that. So, what was that? May it was just an update. Or yeah, or the February sixth meeting. Started. I think we miss oh, I misstated that. Thank you. I didn't catch it. When I it. Barn tax. What the heck is this? <laughs> I'm afraid to ask. I'm afraid to ask too. <laughs> Is there another one in there? Oh, yeah, here you go, guys. I'm sorry. I'm forwarding up my information here. Do you know anything about this, Julie? I, this is the first time I've yeah, seen this. So. Yeah, um, I think Julia well, received an email from um, someone asking if the town would be interested in doing this. Um, do we participate in this program? I think it's another tax. Um, Exemption, and if you have a certain type of barn, you would get an exemption on it under taxes. Public benefit for the preserving their barns or other old farm buildings while agreeing to maintain their structures through a 10 year renewable easement. Oh, okay. And any barn owners interested need to apply. Uh, before April 15th, applications can be obtained from our town office or downloaded from a packet. Uh, and there's a website here at newhampshirepreservation.org. Or call 603-224-2281. Historical Agriculture Society. Hmm. Barn Tax Incentive. We didn't apply. You didn't? I, I was just wondering if you did. I was, I mean, you came right to my mind, so. I think the town has to participate in the program before residents can apply for okay. the exemption, so. We have to find out how many people might be interested in that. Many left. <laughs> I have to read up more on it. I'm really not new to me. You Has take it ever come up in discussion? Did this result? I've never somebody? seen it before. I'd like to. <clears throat> get some contact more specific or? information okay. about this yeah. and, and what just walking through how does a town approve this. It talks about the towns and cities using the program. 
and then barn owners interested. So I think it's like you say, first the town has to agree to participate, and then the barn owners have to fill out some sort of an application. Um, I'm not sure, I'd like to get maybe a little more clear on, there's a 10 year renewable easement to maintain this structure. I just get a better understanding of this. Yeah. Maybe we can get that in the next meeting. And and how how does the town go about deciding to participate? Is that with a, a warrant article at an annual meeting? Is it uh, pay a fee? Traditionally, how, how the town has gotten on board with this? Yeah. Uh, to me, it, it does seem like maybe a warrant article would be how that would come about. But it, you know, it's not clear. Maybe Carl Schmidt knows about it out of Orford. He's the chair of the New Hampshire Historic Agriculture Structures Advisory. Good idea. And last on the dock is Maloon Road Landfill, Brown Water Monitoring. Um, I thought we were all done with this, didn't we? I thought we were all done with this. Uh, yeah, it was done last year. Yeah. Um, Julie Apple spoke with um, the New Hampshire DES, and I guess we are required to continue to monitor, monitor it yearly. Um, and we didn't budget for it this year, um, but last year it cost $1,250, approximately $1,250. Um, but, and then Julie spoke with, um, I think it was Sean at ATB, yeah. and they said the cost will be sim similar to last year. But um, the Department of Environmental Stu uh, Services said we do have to do it yearly. Forever? Mm, sounded like it. <laughs> wow, I thought we had been exactly. testing that for, you know, we had passed you know, all the tests and stuff. That's I thought what we they were all done. The last time, Julie. That's all I know. Yeah. They said yeah. we were done. So, uh, and we capped them and everything. That was the board's understanding when we dealt with this, was that this was, was going to end the project. So. I'm, I'm wondering why uh, Bergeron would, because um, I, th I think we got that understanding from them. So I'm wondering, but what what do you have there, John? Is that a letter from? A. Yeah, it's a letter of agreement for 2,500 bucks. Oh, they're more than willing to do it for money. I, yeah, okay, so that's what that is. But I, I just I don't know why we run to the miss. Understanding that I mean, I totally remember it. There was no more monitoring Done. required. I'd like to get a little bit more. Yeah. Before, before I think before we sign off on a on a new contract, I'd like to definitely find out where the disconnect was on that. I don't know even who to sure. ask. Um, who have you been in contact with? Okay, Somebody in the DES. Yeah, so yeah. was in contact with the um, Department of Environmental Services. No, DES. DES. I'm wondering if there's anything in the file. Would it be on that minute? project that, yeah, that she's checking the minutes. There should be I something in writing yeah. Yeah, in I that file sworn we that, signed off on that. Um, mm -hmm. that that binds us to continuing to test. Okay. Yeah. Let me have a look at the file yeah. and see what you can come up with. Another action. I, I mean the timeline is for have it done in May, so we you know have a little bit of time. Don't you think you want to get a yeah. Yeah. Should be something. Else. Yeah. yeah. We'll have to check those minutes because I thought we I thought we sealed them all up and everything. <laughs> well, we did. I mean, yeah. How can you, how can you monitor if they're sealed? <laughs> it's not going to blow it open. John, is that a contract? New contract? Yeah. Twenty five hundred. I they did well, well, Approximately, they said, but would you call them? Um, well, that's what we paid now is $2,500. Yeah, I know. That's a big approximate. say that in the letter. I don't think it says that. Was it Jay Poole? Yes. Yeah, he was the one that met with the board. The one that signed off. Yeah, Jay Poole and P.E. And that would be... Hey, maybe we misunderstood what he was signing off maybe. on, but I, I thought he was Jay Pullen off. will be the project manager for this project. Mr. Pullen will be responsible for coordinating the work and communicating with the town at DES. Let's, let's get a hold of him. Yeah.
2500 instead of 12. Yeah. What did we give him an 8% increase a year for three years? Is that how he ended up with that? No, it doesn't make any sense to me. We paying his insurance too. <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, any other new business? Any old business? We talked about the health care. Yes, sir. Yeah, the question is the fact that scrap metal thing. Is that. Oh, oh brother. <laughs> is that a Model T? <laughs> Twelve fifty, yes. Is that just a flat fee, flat regardless fee. of what this stuff weighs at the end of the year? I be, I don't know. I don't know. I can't I mean, answer that one. Yeah. Or was that an all-time high? <clears throat> it is a, a and Roger came in and talked with us what, yes. last year, and yeah. it's basically um, gives him the right to <clears throat> go through there, and he has a similar contract with Bartlett, Bartlett yep. and that's how it's. Done, but it's pillaging rights. Does he cherry pick or does he take everything? Well, one of the reasons he came here and talked to us about a year ago or whenever that was is because <coughs> there were people coming down from Berlin and well, from yeah, other yeah. areas that, that were, were picking out that didn't really have a right to, and he was not happy well, make, not. being able to make it work. Well, I mean, what if we had, didn't have any? What if we just sold it? To these scrap collectors. I mean, you take a junk car, junk car five years ago for <coughs> fifty dollars. You can get two fifty, three, three hundred fifty dollars for a junk car today. Yeah. I mean, junk is at an all time high. Mm -hmm. Are we leaving money on the table? Mm -hmm. That's my question. Yeah. I have to look at that and update that one. I mean, why wouldn't we sell it directly to a, a junk dealer? Well, well uh, when uh, when we discussed this with Roger. I think he brought in um, the documents that showed what he was pulling out of there, and it was pretty reasonable. It, w it wasn't like anybody was getting rich on it, and and it was keeping the metal, you know, from from building up at, to levels that then had were going to require us to deal with it, and it it, it seemed like a it's a reasonable way to deal with that overage. Now, oh, I'll ask John. <coughs> yeah. I never met a poor junk dealer in my life. They always live in a big house. Roger <laughs> <laughs> doesn't. Well, well yeah, not I, I don't have any problems with kind of... We can look into that. I don't remember, but I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, am I okay? I don't know enough about it to yeah. say. Yeah. We can look into it, see what John thinks. Yeah. Pete? Question. Shoot. Black Mountain. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious. I don't know. I didn't know it was so. Don't own anything new. Didn't buy anything last year. All I can think is the black. What, in the town report you saw that thing? She thinks of maybe the tie roll, piece of property and tie roll for the pump, for the tank. You said black though, right? I'm black? Right. So I'm black Mountain? Yeah. Black Mountain Road, the only thing I could think of was the ski touring track in the I don't think we own them. But I was just good. Don't have an answer for you on that one. <coughs> it's no. always been there. No. On every town report. I just was looking over town property. Yeah. I mean, through the years, has it always been uh, on all the town reports? Or? On Black Mountain no, Road, though. Too far up from my land. Where's that? Where's that? Maybe it is right there by Windy Hill. By Windy Hill. Park. Right by Windy Hill. Um, That's what I was that, wondering. That but I was just curious. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So I didn't know we owned it. The only thing I could think of. Yeah. Yeah, we can do it. We'll, 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 we'll Anything else, Tom? You got anything? Nope. Oh, I thought you had a paper <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Juvenile. That's, you can't do that. All right. Um, no other business? No? All right. We'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.
Thanks for coming, everybody. Thank you.